welcome. I'm Trista Trone, I'm the recruitment coordinator for the School of Music, and this is where we start our campus visits. I'm here to help you with any of your questions that you have about admissions, your application process, or your auditions into the School of Music, as well as your scholarships through the School of Music. Awesome! So Trista, can you show me around to the awesome facilities that the School of Music has and where students get to take their classes, do their performances, auditions, and whatnot, and all that fun stuff? Absolutely. I'll grab my keys and we'll head off. All right. So if you are a music student, you usually start your mornings in Brown Hall. All of our academic classes mostly happen in the morning, and then all of our uh, rehearsals happen in the afternoon. So you'll find lots of our music majors up in this hallway, and this is where most of the classrooms are. There are three music fraternities. These are three really popular music organizations for our students to join uh, as music majors. We have an all-female and all-male and mixed one. Um, they're a little bit more of a professional um, Greek organization versus the social ones on campus. So one of the key skills you have to build as a music major are your piano skills. Our students take group piano as a beginner class, so if you're coming in with no piano skills, that's okay, we're ready to teach you. Um, so all the students sit individually, they have their own headphones, and then you'll see the sign up here actually lights up and shows you the music, um, exactly what the instructors are playing. Um, you can also test out of this class if you already have piano skills, so it's a really easy class to skip if you've already been taking piano. Awesome, so how many students are usually in a class? Is it usually full? Yeah, actually we fill it up cool. pretty well. Yeah, um, so all the music majors have to take it. Music business, music education, music therapy, and all of our applied students, as well as some of our minors. Um, just depending on which major you are, um, depends on how many semesters okay. you take it. So they start out taking it their first semester, or is it like second usually, semester after they get intro, or? Yeah, usually I start them right off in piano, because okay. it matches really well with our theory class. So what you're learning in your theory class is you can really visually see on the pianos, which makes both the classes a little bit easier for our students. All right, cool. You're also gonna see lots of lockers as we walk down the hallways. Those are all first come, first serve for our music majors. Just bring your own lock and put it on there and you can use it all year. to the School of Music. We actually have a clinic here on campus for our music therapy majors to work with local clients. So they actually bring them here on campus and we have lots of fun instruments over here. They're super colorful um, that the students could work with. We also have a nice space over here with some of our bigger instruments. Um, so yeah, lots of space to move and make music in here. As you're here, you can hear all the music from all the classrooms flowing out in the hallway. Yeah, that's a couple of our piano labs. Piano studio to be typical uh, music classrooms you'll see it's pretty small a lot of our classes start with about 20 students or less depending on your um, class size so depending on how big the freshman class is is how many students will be in here um, but like I said usually under 20 um, all of our music majors start with their core music classes which are theory piano and then they move on to history and then they kind of start to go their own way depending so music business goes more into business stuff, education more into education, and so on. But we really start all of our freshmen right here, and you get to know your cohort really well. So we have about 200 music majors and um, a little over 40 faculty, so the student-to-faculty ratio is really low here as well. Um, so you really get to know everyone really quickly that first mm -hmm. semester, and it feels like kind of a small family and uh, community. Cool. Yeah, something really cool about Western is that all of our studio faculty, which are the faculty that teach all the individual instruments, are full-time here every day. We have no adjunct faculty and no students are taking lessons from graduate students. So you actually get to take from somebody who has years of experience and a lot of knowledge in their instrument and they're a specialist in that area. Some of them do teach some of our general education classes as well in music for our non-majors. Um, we also have directors in every area as well that are specialized in those areas. And we have uh, program directors 
in every major area that not only teach your major specific classes, but they're also your advisor. So um, say you're in music business, you're going to be taking all your music class business classes with uh, Courtney Blankenship, and then she'll also be your advisor all four of those years as well. And uh, that means you build a really special relationship, and it's something that continues on after graduation. Um, our alumni typically have really good relationships with our advisor and continue to support us and come back to our events. Great. And weren't you a School of Music student? I was. I mentioned music business because that was my major, and um, I always bragged that Courtney was a really great advisor and continued to help me out after graduation. I would send her my resume or my cover letter ask for advice in general on interviewing or where she knew of job openings and she was a really big help along the way even after graduation so it was nice to feel like um, I could always go back to her even though I wasn't a student here and then returning afterwards it was really nice that people remembered me five years later remembered mm -hmm. songs that I sang and different classes that I took so it really felt like even though I was gone for a few years when I came back it was like coming back home. It's all about the Western family you have yeah. it once and you're gonna have it forever right? Yep. <laughs> Upstairs and downstairs right here, we have lots of studios on the right and lockers on the left. Um, so when I say studios, that means all of those individual faculty that teach each of those um, instruments each have their own office here and they do their own lessons here. Yeah, I just like, I saw it right. right. Right here we have our three accompanists. Uh, Western brags a lot about our accompanists. They're really talented and they're free for students to use. So if you cool. are a music major, um, you can have them come to your studio lessons, you can rehearse one-on-one -on -one with them on your own, and they'll also be there to play for your juries, which is the um, sort of final test for your studio lessons, and then also play for your recitals later on in the year all for free, which is a major perk, and we're one of the only universities in Illinois, um, I believe, that offers that right now. So it's a quick walk next door just across the way uh, to see the rest of our uh, music classrooms and facilities. We just left Brown Hall and this is Salee Hall right here. You can remember it, it's one with no windows. So in this room, we've got our practice rooms. I'm gonna take you into this one and show you how it works. So this one feels a little smaller. It's the one that does have a piano in it, but I'm gonna close up the door and show you a few tricks we can do. We do have a speaker up here that you can bring your laptop to or cell phone or whatever you have and hook that up if you'd like to perform with a backing track. And just behind you, we can flip this on. record anything we're saying with all the different settings and we can save it to a USB as well or we can play it back right in the moment. We can record anything we're saying with all the different settings. It's me. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, another feature I really like is being able to hear what it's going to sound like in different spaces. I know it's really important if you're a performer to understand how the acoustics work. So this is the sound of a regular practice room. Here there's no echo. But say you're practicing for like a cathedral space. You can hear the reverberation and then maybe like a baroque room. A little less, but like still is like a really nice bright sound. Um, I'm sure it does a lot of other fancier things that the <laughs> students know about, um, but it's a really nice space for them to get some practice in and uh, work on their piano skills or instrumental skills or whatever, whatever else they need to work on in here. All right. Now we 
got several all across here. Rarely are, there full, are they full unless they're practicing for juries, which is a very busy time of year. But um, they're open all day, all through the night, and we try to keep our buildings open as well. We usually see music majors in all times of day. So, juries are like a final test for their studio lessons. So you take one-on-one um, -on -one lessons once a week with your instructor, and then the other time you meet for the week is with everyone who takes from that same teacher. So as a vocalist, I uh, met with my teacher every Tuesday, and then every Thursday I saw everyone else who was also her student, mm -hmm. and we would sing for each other, uh, do a little critiquing, and sometimes we would take it into a little bit more of a professional setting and actually um, go on stage and dress up and actually do more of a formal performance and get a little bit more critiquing from that as well. So it's a really nice experience and you wrap it up with your jury at the very end, which is sort of a final test. Um, you prepare three songs and you sing two of them and a few other things as well. Our music majors, uh, the upperclassmen, uh, well, upperclassmen and lowerclassmen both have the option to live on the fine arts floor. Um, the fine arts floor for freshmen is over in the freshman dorms, but our upperclassmen one is right here at Corbin Olsen, which is a really nice uh, location and one of the nicest dorms. I mean, I lived there. I think it was pretty <laughs> My mom lived there too, so I think that's pretty awesome. But it's newly renovated, um, great cafeteria for our students, even if they don't live there, they can walk right across um, mm -hmm. the tennis courts to get food. So this is Kofak Recital Hall. This is where the magic happens. You can hear them all warming up, so it sounds a bit of a mess right now. <laughs> um, we've got our Kofak Recital Hall manager here. Um, she can help you set up any recitals you need, um, do scheduling. Uh, she helps us with our programs, and she mm -hmm. also can help you with a poster that we actually work with our art department on. Um, so all of our students doing recitals can have their own personalized poster to put up here, and they can also use uh, digital um, graphics to be able to share on Facebook and all of that. And is that for you too for mm -hmm. students? Yep, yep. It's just a project they do actually for an art class. So oh, we wow. just send it over like Google Form and kind of just post what we need and mm -hmm. the students will make it. And they get experience and we get posters. So it's a yeah, great deal. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think I'm going to take you to the upstairs view because it's my personal favorite place to watch recitals. All right. Soft I've never been the upstairs. <laughs> follow us on Facebook you have seen our live streams and this is where actually all the work goes into those live streams. Uh, we have a few students that do work up here so it's a job you can do as a student which is really nice you can make money and get really good experience learn a lot and get your recital attendance. So over here we've got our sound guys they can do um, live audio and they can also do recordings for the students later we'll put that in our music library or make recordings for our students for their solo recitals. Um, and on this, this is all of our live streaming equipment. Now, I'm probably gonna get made fun of for trying to explain this, <laughs> but I've seen a team of two to four people all lined up across here working, depending on um, what the event is and how elaborate they want it to be. Um, there's usually one person directing. We've got this fun, like, um, gamer looking thing that actually we can use this <laughs> to control all of our cameras that we have in the um, recital hall. And then this guy usually does our little commercials and I guess tags is what you would call it. So okay. During the concert, if maybe there's ensemble switching or we need to put up a title of a piece, um, mm -hmm. this guy will control it. And then this is all of our um, live sound equipment. So whatever's going out on the live stream, that's what that guy's controlling. So a lot of our music business students, sometimes mm -hmm. music ed, anyone who really just wants to develop some skills mm -hmm. or maybe just has an interest in technology or um, wants a job. Um, it's a really easy gig, I mm -hmm. think. And um, they plan around your schedule so you can sign up for the ones you want to work okay. at. Um, so it's really nice to be able to work around your schedule and be able to make money. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see we've got, well maybe, I don't know if you can zoom that far, but we've got a camera far back in that left corner that can zoom right in down to like the fibers of the shirt on our conductor. So it is the highest quality camera we've got. We just got it this past year and started it this fall. 
Um, so it's really nice equipment to work with. We've got two cameras right here on the sides that can get really nice side shots of our ensemble. And then there's a camera right below us that can zoom in straight into the center as well. Mm -hmm. um, you're seeing Wind Ensemble right now. That's our top touring band. Um, so they're a really talented bunch of kids and, or excuse me, young adults. And uh, they're rehearsing for our showcase of bands this weekend. What are some of the places they go to? Yeah, um, I don't know about this band in particular, but we do have our top uh, four groups that go on tours. This past year, the mm -hmm. uh, choirs went to Boulder, Colorado. Mm. Um, last year, the Jazz Studio Orchestra went to New Orleans. Uh, and when I was a student here, I remember the choirs going to Miami. Um, this band, back in my day, went to Brazil. Um, just, just lots of different places, depending mm -hmm. on the interest, what kind of music they're playing, and um, uh, who's going on the tour. So it changes cool. every year. But we try to rotate. At least one group gets to go on one of the big trips each year. Mm -hmm. um, but every year they all go on a recruitment tour um, where they stop at lots of uh, high schools in the Midwest. And then they also sometimes perform in maybe like clubs or different performance venues around the Midwest. Okay. So that's one of the favorite Great. things, definitely. They all get to hop on a tour mm -hmm. bus for two or three days, skip a few days of class, and get to hang out with each other and do a lot of performing. I've been on one of those, a few of those mm -hmm. tours now, and they, they work really hard, but they're so talented, and it's yeah. so cool to see them. It gives them that experience, what it would be yeah. like to be on the road as a musician and be in a in an ensemble for it, yeah, so that's definitely. great. And one of the other jobs you can do, I forgot to mention this, so we have our COFAC recital hall manager. She manages a staff of students that work here. So if you like moving stuff or maybe start and clapping, opening doors, um, it's a really easy job to do. And you can uh, just work at all the different recitals. It's mm -hmm. one of those, again, that you just sign up to do. So they'll always work around your schedule, which is really nice. I would always suggest um, working on campus versus off campus because mm -hmm. they're gonna be able to work around your schedule. Yeah. admissions counselors on campus and I'm doing these videos so I can share on like my social media and students can see the different areas if they can't come on campus or like need a reason to sure. come sure trying to drive them through using all these video footage and whatnot awesome. Awesome. so so this is the instrument all kinds of cool instruments yeah all kinds of stuff everywhere <laughs> is this where you teach your class well, I teach as well class here. yeah we just cool. finished uh, about 15 minutes ago we just finished mm -hmm. <laughs> And do you teach them like a variety of instruments or do they get to choose which ones they want to learn how to fix? We start with the easiest and work our way to the hardest. Okay. Um, we start with really basic things and try mm -hmm. to cover things that they'd be able to do mm -hmm. um, so that they know what to do and then what to have somebody else do. <laughs> so, All right, cool. <laughs> yep. That's pretty awesome. I didn't know an instrument repair class was... I know, right? 
you know. So brand new this fall, awesome. so we're always adding new classes That's to great. make sure our students are well equipped. Mm -hmm. yep. So can students who aren't in this class, like, they can just send their instruments here, and it's, is it free then? Or if, if it's a school instrument, any instrument that they have checked out from the instrument room, yes, we okay. take care of the maintenance and the repair for anything owned by the school. So okay, cool. Yeah. So if any of the Fun. students joining us can't afford the, the instrument they play, they can rent one through us. All right. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much You're for letting me get a little you. peek in here. Thank you. <laughs> so for renting instruments, is that like a certain fee for how many years? It's free, or it's free to rent mm -hmm. the instruments? Yeah. Wow, that's great. Do they have to qualify, like meet a certain need, or is it just if they don't have an instrument? Our priority is going to be making sure our ensembles have all the right instruments in it. So okay. if we need a bassoonist and the bassoonist we have doesn't have a bassoon, they're going to get it first. But mm -hmm. then we might have a music major that says, hey, I really want to learn bassoon. If we've got extras, we'll definitely rent them out. Okay, great. Great to know. Um, what advice or, you know, ideas or things you experienced here at Western would you like to share with prospective students or students who are like online about possibly coming to Western or maybe don't even know um, and are thinking about studying music somewhere? Yeah, my strongest suggestion, um, no matter if you're looking at Western or anywhere else, um, visit with the studio professor that you're going to be one-on-one -on -one with. Um, that relationship's really important and that's somebody you're going to be working with one-on-one -on -one for four years. So you want to know that you're going to be able to work well with that person. Um, my second bit of advice for any music major is start working on music now um, and not just your instrument and not just singing. Um, maybe start dabbling on a piano, start taking music theory classes if your high school offers those. Anything you can do to get a step ahead will really help you out because um, that first semester can be really tough, especially if you're not used to studying music. It's a very different um, way of learning and where you, when you're used to doing math and English and all of that, jumping right into music and just having such a full music schedule can be a lot. So anything you can do now to just like fill your life with music and learn music, um, it'll help you a lot that freshman year. All right. Well, thank you so much, Trista. And I look thank forward you. to seeing you around the School of Music as I keep exploring and going to the different events and meeting with different people on campus. So awesome. thank you for visiting and I hope to see you guys around soon.